time trials are a great way to try your hand at racing. They're relatively inexpensive, there's lots of local events, they don't take very long, and if you're new to cycling, there isn't that intimidating pressure of riding in a peloton. But when I speak to people about having a go at a time trial, they're often worried about the kit. They say, I don't have a time trial bike. Well, the thing is, you don't actually need a time trial bike to do a time trial. I mean, yes, if you want to be competitive, you probably do need a fancy time trial bike and all the gear. But if you just want to see how you go in a time trial, or maybe measure your improvement week to week as you get fitter, all you need is a road bike. Now, one piece of kit that's a really good value investment for the occasional time trial is a set of clip-on error bars like these. They're great for entry-level time trials or triathlon. Now, because I love time trialing and I wanted to ride my bike fast if I could, I thought I'd do a little experiment to see how much quicker or not these clip-on aero bars are than just riding on the drops. In terms of experimental setup, I have my Orbea Orca Aero Road Bike with deep section vision wheels and a power meter. I've set up a test time trial course two kilometers long on a slight uphill drag through Corvara in Alta Badia. Why uphill, you might ask? Well, the reason for choosing an uphill drag is to help hold a consistent power for the whole test course. I'm going to ride it three times in each setup. Now, the reason for doing three tests with each setup is that an average of several tests will give us a more reliable result. And also, if any result is obviously anomalous, we can discount it and repeat. So when it comes to swapping the aero bars off the bike, I wanted to keep the total weight of the entire bike the same, so that the only thing that we're changing is the position on the bars. So what I've done is I've weighed the aero bars and they've come in at 280 grams. And for the run without the bars, I've got a bottle with 280 milliliters of water. And for the run with the aero bars, I've got an empty bottle. So the weight difference in water makes up for the weight difference in the clip-on aero bars. Gonna do a rolling start at 30 kilometers an hour. Right, about to set off on run two with the aero bars. Gonna have a rolling start at 30 kilometers an hour. Let's go. Right, righty ho, run three with the aero bars. Here we go. Right, about to set off on the first run without the aero bars, gonna ride on the drops. So, gonna set off now and do our rolling start at 30 kilometers an hour. Right, run two on the drops. Three on the drops, here we go. Well, the results are in, and I'm surprised to say there's actually quite a major difference. I wasn't actually expecting there to be a huge difference over only two kilometers. But without the aero bars, I averaged 1.3 watts more, and yet I was an average of 15 seconds slower 
over the two kilometers. If you multiply that by 20 to get a 25 mile time trial, which is 40 kilometers, that adds up to about five minutes of difference. That's a lot. That's a big difference. The reason I'm surprised by this result is that I know that the most important thing for aero gains and aero losses is your frontal area. And for most people, that means that to go faster, they need to get lower at the front. Now, on this aero bike, I can't actually get super low at the front because I'm a bit short. So when I put the aero bars on, I don't get any lower. In fact, if anything, I've got a little bit higher. And I thought that would mean I might actually be slower with the clip on aero bars. So how did I get quicker? Well, I think what it might be is that with aero bars, my elbows were closer together. So my arms were narrower. Whereas on the drops, arms are out here, so it's wider. So that might be where the gains came from. Either way, it's fascinating. It shows that you can actually make quite a big difference with just a simple piece of kit, like some clip-on aero bars. Another major advantage of aero bars, which we didn't test here, is that often people find they can relax better on aero bars than on the drops, because you need fewer muscles in your back and shoulders and arms to hold yourself in position. And if you're using your upper body muscles less, that means you've got more energy for your legs push hard. Hopefully this video will whet your appetite for time trialing and show that if you fancy having a dabble, the equipment should really not be a barrier. But it also shows that remarkably small adjustments can make a big improvement in your time. If you'd like to watch another video about this, why not check out why size is important in flat time trials, at least by clicking down here. Or you can check out the Geek Edition of this video where we look at the nitty gritty of aerodynamics by clicking down here.